Hey, Math 10C. So now we're getting into Unit 5, Systems of Linear Equations. So 5.1 is going to be Systems of Linear Equations, but we're going to be solving it uh, graphically. Okay, so we can solve it graphically by actually drawing these things out, or we're going to be solving it using your um, graphing calculator, right? So either a TI-84 or a TI-Inspire, typically. All right, so Systems of Linear Equations. So in the last unit, we were dealing with linear equations, right? So that was something like y is equal to mx plus b, kind of that standard equation of a line, right? So when we have a system of linear equations, it, it just means two. We, we've really got two equations that we're gonna go. So can you see that we've got like this line and this line, right? Those are two equations that we could graph, right? Well, where they cross, will end up being the solution to this system of linear equations. Okay, and I'll explain a bit more like why we consider that a, a solution, right? Um, if you think about it, here, let's, let's take a minute and look at this example. Um, okay. So these two lines, like this line here, would be the line y is equal to x plus 2, right? It has a rise of 1, run of uh, 1. It's off a little bit there, but like just imagine it's going through nicely through the points there. That's just the, it, the picture came out a little funny. So that's that line. And then the other line, like this one, well, that would be the line y is equal to negative x, right? That goes down 1 over 1. So it has a slope of negative 1 over 1, if you like, right? And then the y-intercept would be plus 0 because it crosses through 0, but we just don't write that. Okay, so if these are our two equations... Why we consider the solution to this equation is because if we think of this point right here, right? That point right there. Well, this point has the value negative one, one, right? So that means it has an X value at negative one and it has a Y value at one. So Y value at one. So what that means is that that's shared for both of them. So that ends up being a solution, right? we can actually put those in for both of them. If I end up putting in, let's say for this one, y is equal to, and I throw in negative one in for this, well, what do I get? Well, negative one instead of x plus two, then y is equal to one, which we were expecting, right? So y is equal to that one value there. And then let's do it down here. So if I put in y is equal to negative and then put negative one in for x, we get y is equal to one. So they're the same thing, right? The X value and the Y values are the same for both. So it's considered a solution, right? And there's some applications of this as we go down. So, all right, so that's, that's kind of the idea here. So, so if we look at this example now, it says consider the equations for these two lines. Okay, well, we can graph those, right? And, and I, won't, I won't actually get into rearranging them and doing it, but what we'd typically do is we'd want to rearrange these into the form y is equal to mx plus b, right? We, we want to get y on its own, essentially. So then we can see what the slope is, we can see what the y-intercept is, right? And then we could graph these things. That's typically how you could do it. Um, but I'm not going to get into that. I'll just kind of assume that, you know, here they've given us our two lines there. Now, the solution to this, where would the solution be? Well, the solution is where they're the same, right? So this is the solution right there. And that would be at the point negative two comma negative three. Okay, so, so that point, when x is negative two, y is negative three, that's true for both of those lines. Okay, so that's what we consider the solution there. Now, we can, we can uh, verify our solution, right? If we started off with this line and we threw x in, as negative 2 and y in as negative 3, right? Just our x value and our y value there. Then if we solve that down, right? Like actually just um, solve this part, we end up getting negative 12 on one side of the equation is equal to negative 12 on the other side of the equation. So that's true, right? So we end up like figuring out that that actually is a true statement, right? That if I put those numbers in for x and y, we end up actually getting that number, okay? Um, and then same thing on this side, right? You end up getting one is equal to one. If you got one side not equal to the other, then that wouldn't be true and we did something wrong. 
All right, so let's try one here. So now it says solve this linear system. All right, so we can't really just start graphing this, right? I don't really know what that looks like yet. Typically the best one to turn it into, right? In the last unit, we had all our different uh, different equations of a line. The, the best one to turn it into is gonna be that y is equal to mx plus b. So let's just get y on its own. So let's do this first one. So we've got 2x plus 3y is equal to 3. Okay, step number one, I'm gonna bring that 2x, I'm gonna bring it over to the other side. Really, I'm gonna subtract it from both sides, right? But we're probably getting a little bit better at this now, so here, I'll, I'll write it out though. 2x, so minus 2x and minus 2x. So we get 3y is equal to, and just so it looks like, you know, the something x plus b, I'm gonna write the negative 2x part first and then plus three. You could have written it the other way too, but it's just kind of easier to see, you know, what our slope is and what our y-intercept is there. Okay, so almost there, very last step, I just gotta get rid of that three. So I'm gonna divide both sides by three. So we get y is equal to negative two over three, x plus, and then three over three is just one. Okay, so that's our first our first one. Now let's do the second one. Second one should be a little bit easier. So we've got x minus y is equal to four. All right, so it'd be fine. I could bring the x over to this side. That'd be totally fine. You'd bring the x over, but then we'd have negative y left over here, which is okay. You just have to divide everything by negative one, right? Because that's really like negative one y when we're done there. But you know, I think it'd be a little bit easier. Why don't we just do it a little different? Why don't we take the, the negative y from this side and make it positive, just move it over to that side. So then you'd have x is equal to, and then y plus four. And then we'll move the four over to the other side, right? And it'd be minus something when it comes over. So that'd be x minus four is equal to y. That's the same thing, right? Doesn't matter that the y is on the right. And from here, you can, you can see now that our slope is one, right? Like one over one and our y-intercept is negative four. All right, so now let's make a Cartesian plane so we can actually graph this thing. Um, I can see that, you know, this one's gonna have a y-intercept of negative four. This one's gonna have a y-intercept of one. So I wanna leave like, you know, at least four on the bottom here, right? Because it's gonna be, you know, down four. So I don't know, why, why don't we make our, our x-axis like there? Okay, and then let's make our other axis here. All right, so I think we're good to go. So now let's do the, I'll do the red one first. So this one crosses at negative four, right? Cut, cut across the Y axis, so right there. And then remember this thing is one over one. So this thing goes up one over one, up one over one. Okay, so it goes, up one over one, up one over one. But really, I think you get the idea. We could actually just draw this now. Just kind of going through, nicely through all those boxes, right? You should use a straight edge. My straight edge doesn't work that well on the computer, but that's the idea there. Okay, and then, yeah, technically you'd have arrows on the end of those to show it goes forever. Um, okay, now the next one. So let's do the purple one here. This one crosses at one. So I know it's gonna cross there for my Y axis. And then this goes down two over three. So down two over three, down two over three. So we can sketch that one out. All right, so what is our solution to this system of linear equations? Well, it's where they cross, right? Our solution here is really gonna be uh, three, right? So that's our X value, comma, negative one. So there we go. That is our solution right there. Now, so that that's our solution. You can graph the thing out. That, that'll work. The problem is though, sometimes they might cross, like, you know, not in a nice point like this where it's three, negative one. Sometimes you're gonna get a decimal. So what we're gonna do, I wanna start showing you guys how to graph these things using your graphing calculator too. So can you grab your TI-84 um, or TI Inspire. The problem is I don't have a TI Inspire on this on this computer. But if you grab both your calculators, I'll kind of I'll kind of walk you through how to how to do this.
Okay, so here's our TI-84 calculator. Um, and, you, and you know what? For the TI Inspire people out there, um, what I'm going to do is actually, I, I've made a video I put like on the website there too that shows this exact same thing just with, with different equations with the same process showing you how to do with the TI Inspire. So I'll, I'll kind of show you where that's at when I'm done when I'm done this one. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to pretty much like on this calculator, you guys see at the top, You've got all of your uh, graphing stuff is pretty much those top buttons there. So we're going to push the Y equals one just right off the bat. And it should bring up a screen that looks something like this. So now this calculator only really works when it's written in our uh, Y is equal to MX plus B form, right? Do you see how all of these are Y is equal to something? And I've got Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4. So those are all just different lines I could graph. So we'll actually just put it in just like the way it's written here. So if I do my the red one first, right? Do you remember that was just x minus 4? So your x is right here, like where it's red there. So it's x and then minus 4. And we'll just do that one first for a second. So that's our, that's our line. And then I want you to see if you go graph, that it'll end up making a graph of that line. Okay? And now let's go back. So then I can just go back over to the my, my y is equal to screen. And then I'm going to put in my next line. So the next line is going to be negative 2 over 3x plus 1. So I can type that in as negative, not minus, negative. It's got to be this one when it's the first, when it's out front. So negative 2 divided by 3x plus one okay and then if I go back to my screen we can see that you know we're getting our other line there they're the opposite of the colors that I used but that's fine okay so what we should see here right if we if we do this right is that we should end up with three negative one for where they cross so where we find these things is under um, calc Do you guys see like calc at the top it's in blue so we're gonna, the way we get the blue ones is by going second function and then calc. And then I'm gonna get this list of, uh, of uh, options here. So what we wanna find, like this thing gives you, we could find our, our like a value, um, we could find our zeros, which really are just our x-intercepts. We could find our minimum value, maximum value, and intersect there, right? We're gonna be using these a ton, especially next year. But for now, the only one we really are interested in is number five, right? So you can either go down to five or you can actually just push five and it'll select it. Okay, so I just pressed five and selected it there. Now what's happening is it's saying, okay, first curve. You see how it says that in the bottom? First curve, question mark. By curve, it means line, right? So it was saying, okay, it's wondering where these things actually cross. And it's wondering what the first line actually is. So I should be able to just click it now and it'd be fine. But typically what I do is I just move the little the little spider guy closer to where they actually cross. And it, you see how it's all blue on my screen here? That's because it thinks it's on the blue line, right? It's, it's saying, is this the first curve? And I'm going to say yes. So I'm going to push enter. Okay. And then it says second curve. And do you see how everything's in red now? So it's jumped over to the red line. Do you see how the little cursor guy is on the red line? Okay, so good. I can really push enter at any time now because it, it knows I'm on the second line. But again, I just kind of like to be close to where where the, where the it is. And the reason why I'll be close is because sometimes when we start dealing with different kinds of curves, sometimes there's more than one answer, right? So anyway, I'll push enter. And then now it's saying guess question mark. So it's saying, should it try to take a guess at what the answer is? And I'm going to say yes. So enter one more time. And now it told me that the answer is three negative one, right? So X is negative, X is three, Y is negative one. So X is three, Y is negative one. So that just is that point, right? They've given, they've given us the point right there. Like I said, that's going to be valuable because it's not always going to be so nice where we can just sketch it out and have it land on nice numbers like that. Okay. All right, moving on. We'll, we'll do some more of those uh, in a bit here. So, oh yeah, sorry. And then here, I'm going to show everybody with a TI Inspire where to go. Okay, if you have a TI Inspire, I'd like you to go to lesson 5.1 there. And 
you'll see it right here, right? Solve using a TI Inspire. So this video isn't me, but somebody else doing the same thing where they show you how to uh, do exactly what we just did, but just using the TI Inspire software instead. And then if you're wondering if, if the one I just did didn't make sense for a TI-84, that here's another person doing the same thing, okay? Okay, so let's do this one. So it says, Jaden left her cabin at uh, Waskasu Lake in Saskatchewan and paddled her kayak toward her friend Tyrell's cabin at an average speed of four kilometers an hour. Tyrell started at his cabin at the same time and paddled at an average speed of 2.4 kilometers an hour toward uh, Jaden's cabin. The cabins are six kilometers apart. A linear system that could model this situation is, so they've actually given it to us. We're later on gonna have to write these for ourselves, but they've just given us this one. Um, where D is the distance from Tyrell's cabin, and T is the time after both people started their journeys. When do Jade and Tyrell meet, and how far up, uh, are they from Tyrell's cabin at that time? Okay, so when do they meet? Well, that's asking for time, right? So we're really looking for this one. This really is like our X value from above, right? So it's asking for Xs, and it's asking for Ds. So when they meet, I get the idea is that our x value right our x value and y value would be the same we're really going to graph these lines and we want to figure out where they intersect and the x value is really going to be our t value and our y value is really going to be our d value right so let's uh, let's graph this one so again if you graph this um if you guys hadn't uh if you have a ti inspire go watch the other video that i just put up there first maybe and jump back into this one and then you can do it with us okay so now let's go back here so now we want to graph this thing so i'm gonna i'm gonna go back to my y is equal to and i'm just gonna clear these ones out so you can just push clear go down to the other one and push clear and then type this in so now this one is d and t right but on my calculator it wants x's and y's that's fine just imagine that you know your t is an x so we can type it in just like this. We don't even need to actually write it in the y is equal to mx plus b form. I can type it in as six minus four uh, x. Okay, and that should be good. And then I'm gonna go down to the next one and we're gonna have 2.4 x. And let's see if we can figure out where these things cross. So now I'm gonna go graph Wait a second for them to draw. All right, so we should be pretty good to go there. So now that we have that, made it a little bigger there so we can kind of see what we're doing a little bit better now. Um, yeah, so we want to figure out where those lines cross, right? Because that's going to tell us our information. So let's, let's go into our calculation, right? So that's going to be that second calc up there. So second and then calc, which is the trace button. Okay, and then I'm gonna go down to intersect, right? So like I said, you can either go down to intersect or just push five. Oop. And so down and then enter if you like, either one. So now again, it's asking us first curve and second curve. So I'm gonna go over to, just closer to it, doesn't matter though, and then enter. And now it's asking second curve. Well, now do you see how it's on the red one there now? I'm gonna say, yep, that's the second curve. And it's saying take a guess. I'm going to say yes, please do take a guess. And then there is my intersection. So this is one where the calculator is really nice, right? Because that's kind of like, you know, those aren't so nice, nice in numbers there, right? So our answer here is going to be 0 0.94 for my x. So 0 0.94, just rounding it, comma, and then 2.25. Okay, now, now that's okay if we don't uh, actually graph this one, making our labels and everything. I think just for the sake of time, we'd be okay with this, right? We could make like a little bit of a sketch, right? Even like if you made like another, another little Cartesian plane over here, like it doesn't need to be exact all the time, where we just kind of sketch this thing out lightly. So we can say, okay, we got one line that goes down here and we got our other line that goes up here and they cross at this point, right? Okay, so remember this was an X value and that was a Y value. But in the context of this question, 
this was really a T value and this was really a D value, right? And they were wondering when do Jaden and Tyrell meet? Okay, so they meet 0 0.94 and then whatever our units were, right? So it was in hours. This was kilometers per hour. So 0 0.94 hours after they left. So yeah, they were, or sorry, they meet <laughs> 0 0.94 hours after they left. Okay. And then the next one, how far, uh, what does it say? How far are they from Tyrell's cabin at that time? They are 2.25, and then just remember what we're dealing with here, 2.25 kilometers, right? Because we were dealing in kilometers and hours because we were going kilometers an hour. Okay, so they are 2.25 kilometers um, from Tyrell's cabin. from the cabin. All right, that's the idea. All right, so now where we're going with this, um, we solve these things graphically. We are going to learn in lessons 5.2 to 5.4 how to solve these things algebraically using different, different strategies. Okay, so, but you would always be able to figure out if you're right by graphing it. You can always find your solution by graphing it using the, the way we just did above. Um, but now what we're going to do, we're going to start creating some systems of linear equations. Okay. So there are some, yeah, good examples here. These are great to kind of look through, you know, when you guys are making your own, cause it kind of explains piece by piece how to find it. I think for the sake of time, um, I'm going to do some of my own examples below, but yeah, these, these are great, right? They kind of give you like the graph and they kind of show you how to get to that point. So when you guys are studying, look at that. All right, so let's let's do question three here. So it says Wayne received and sent a total of 60 text messages on his cell phone in one weekend. Um, he sent 10 more messages than he received. All right, so first off, you remember how when we're wanting to graph this thing, we really want, you know, that Y is equal to MX plus B thing, right? Well, in order to make that work, we needed two variables, right? A y and an x. So step number one, we got to figure out what our variables are. So let's just read this again. Wayne received and sent a total of 60 text messages on his cell phone in one weekend. So he sent, he well, received and sent a total of 60 text messages, right? So it looks like those are my variables. He's like how many he receives plus how many he sent would give me a total of 60, right? So let, let's write that out. So he received, so I'm just gonna call that R. So if we're doing A, like writing this out, then I'd say, okay, the number that he received, R, plus the number that he sent, S, should be equal to 60. That's actually a little equation, right? Because like, watch this, I can, if I like, I can subtract S from both sides and it would look like this. I'd get Y is equal to MX plus B. Let's, uh, I'll leave it like that for now though. So that's just, that'll be our first one. Okay. Um, okay, so it'll be that. Now our second one, let's look into the next part of the question. So it says, he sent 10 more messages than he received. So we should be able to say, um, the amount that the amount that he sent, so S, would be equal to the amount that he received plus ten. Does that kind of make sense, right? Like, so he sent ten more than he received, right? So whatever he received, it was ten more than that. I know, and this is probably the, like where it's tricky, right? Like I always know it's on these ones where kids get a little bit get a little bit messed up on these, right? Um, but yeah, so, so it's going to be practice, right? Just kind of getting, I think that those, uh, those straight in your brain. 
Okay, so we have two, two equations, right? We have a system of linear equations. Our only problem right now is that they're not really arranged properly, right? So what I want, it actually doesn't matter what variable you arrange for. We could either, either arrange it for r is equal to something or s is equal to something, but they should both be the same, right? You should both have them like either one the same. So in this case, I'm, I already have s is equal to something. So I'm going to rearrange the top one here so that it's s is equal to something. So I'm going to, I'm going to change this to, well, I'm going to move the r, like I'm going to subtract r from both sides. So like minus r and minus r. So this would really become s is equal to negative r plus 60. Okay, so now if we're graphing this thing, then just imagine that these things are y's and x's, right? This is like a y and that's like an x. So this is like y is equal to mx plus b. We could solve this thing just like we've been doing. So in that case, then if we were graphing this, our r would be on the bottom, right? These are like our x's and our s would be going up and down. So just keep that in mind when we're, when we're actually solving this thing. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna just graph this one using your, your graphing calculator, but then I'll just make like a quick sketch on this thing and then we'll figure out where they cross. So if we do that, let's, uh, let's do it again. So we've got negative r plus 60. So I'll clear these ones out. And we had, what was it again? It was s is equal to negative r plus 60. So that would really be y is equal to negative x plus 60. And yeah, so let's do that one and then do the next one. So then that's s is equal to r plus 10. So x is equal to r, or s, y is equal to x plus 10. So y is equal to x plus 10. All right, should be good to go. So let's graph this thing. And we wait, you see the little spinning thing up in the top, that means it's doing something. So that went up there, and then we're done. What happened here? Didn't I graph two lines? How come there's only one? Well, maybe some of you guys are seeing my problem, right? The way I have it set up, every one of these ticks is how high up I'm going. Why can't I see this one? Well, one little key here is that this thing is supposed to cross the y-axis at 60. And I'm looking at this and it only goes up to 10. So here's, here's our next little issue here. And the next thing I'm going to teach you on the, on the calculator is how to change our window settings. So we can change our window settings here because I need to see higher, right? I got to see up higher so I can tell what's going on. So I want I want this to go up to 60 at least, right? Probably 80 so I can just see it. So do you guys see how you have a window button on the top here. Like I said, all your graphing stuff is up on the top. So we're going to click on window. And then that brings in our window settings, they're called. So in here, we've got our X minimum, X maximum. Just to give you an idea what that would be, your X minimum would be everything on the left, right? That's saying how far does it go to the left? How far can I see to the left? Your X maximum is saying how far can you see to the right? Okay. And if I go back in there, and then we've got our scale. Well, scale means how much it's going up by. So again, if I go back here, the scale is just like every tick, right? Like one is every tick. You can make that whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. If you have a TI Inspire, it probably says scale auto. Just leave it on auto. It just kind of figures out the best number to, to make it. I'll leave it as one though. It doesn't really matter. The, one, the next one that we do want though, we've got Y min at negative 10 and we've got Y max at 10. So Y max right now is set to 10. That's why we can only see up to 10, right? So let's change that one. I want to change that one to our Y max. So I'm just going to go down here. I'm going to change my Y max. So we'll go clear and then change that to, well, 60 would make it so it, like I could see right where it crossed. But why don't I just make it 80 so I can see like a little bit above it. And then let's check back and see what we got going on. So I'm going to push graph and then perfect. That, I couldn't see that blue line before, right? And then that red line, uh-oh, here's our next problem, right? That's okay. I can't see far enough to the right, right? I'm after where they cross. But that's fine. We're, we can see the 10 right now. You can take a bit of an estimate an estimate on this, right? Looks like I got to go about twice as far before this thing actually cross, or, uh, crosses. 
So I'm going to go like three or even four times as far just to make sure I can see it. So right now our x max is what needs to get bigger, right? So our x max is at 10. Why don't we make it like 40 or 50 even? I'll make it 40 right now, but let's see. So now if we graph this, this is looking more promising. So now it goes up, this one crosses, and I can quite clearly see where they cross now. So now I'm back to the other, to, to what we did before. So now I'm gonna go into my like second and then calculate. And I'm gonna find where they intersect. So I'm gonna push five. I'm gonna go down closer to where I think they cross. It's fine if you didn't. Push enter and then second curve. I'm gonna push enter and then it's gonna take a guess. I'm gonna say, yes, I do want you to take a guess. So they intersect at 25. 35 okay so here 25 35 and just in general I'm not going to get the scale and everything going here but these things would you know go like this <laughs> this is really rough and then this one was coming down those should be straight lines okay and they cross at 25 comma 35 those are those are important numbers right and what are they so remember that R was like our X value, right? So this is R. And this was my S value. Okay, so this was our answer. So if I'm gonna solve this thing graphically, then the answer here is gonna be at 25, 35. So received. Um, how many text did Dwayne send to receive? So he received. He received 25 texts. And he sent 35 texts. Okay, and that's our answer. Um, now, some of you guys might be wondering, what if I had a, or what if I would have uh, rearranged for R in these equations, right? That would have been fine, right? But what would have happened is this side would have been your R, and this side would have been your S, and then these two numbers would have been switched around, right? which would have been fine, right? They, you still would have got the same answers for your received and your sent in the end. Okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't actually matter which one you solve for, okay? All right, number four. All right, so same question, or same thing, right? We just have a different situation now. So hardest part probably is actually just writing out the two systems, right? So let's read this one. It says, during a performance by a theater company, the main act was on stage for three minutes less than twice the time of the opening act. Together, the two acts performed for 132 minutes. Okay, so you know what? Let's do the easier one first. That one at the end there. Well, actually, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's figure out what our variables even are, right? So in the last one, it was, it was received and sent. What's it gonna be in this one? So during the performance by a theater company, the main act was on stage for three minutes less than twice the time of the opening act. So in this case, it looks like the main act is our one variable, right? Like how long was that? And then our opening act was the second variable. So our two variables here are gonna be O and M. You can call them whatever you want, but O and M. The only, <laughs> o is kind of a bad one though, because it kind of looks like a zero, but I'll stick with it. It might look kind of awkward, but let's leave it as O. Um, all right, let's do the easier one first because at, at the end here it says together the two acts performed for 132 minutes. Okay, well if together, if both times together is 132 minutes, well I think I'm safe to say that the main act plus the opening act is equal to 132 minutes. Okay, so there is my equation number one. Now equation number two is it says the main act was on stage for three minutes less than twice the time of the opening act. This one's actually not, not as bad, not too bad. Um, let, let's just kind of like piece it together. So it says the main act. So the main act is equal to, and then three minutes less than twice the time. So that would just be twice the time for the opening act, but then three minutes less than that. <laughs> And that looks like 20, so yeah, that's where the awkward part comes in with the O, but two, two times O minus three. Okay, so that, so good. That's pretty much it. And 
this one's nice because it's already rearranged for M. So that kind of leads me to, you know, change this top one. I should probably rearrange this top one if I have more room here. Sorry, one sec. I made that really big O so it doesn't look like a zero. <laughs> now it looks worse. Uh, okay. So there you go. So there's that, there's that one. And then for this one, I'm just going to rearrange it for M. So I'm going to bring this O to the other side, right? So subtract O from both sides. So now we've got M is equal to negative O, uh, negative O plus 132. Or 132 minus O. Doesn't really matter, but this is just written in that Y is equal to MX plus B form. Okay, we're good to go. We're good to graph this thing now, right? because M is really like my Y in this case, and O is really like my X. So I have this written as Y is equal to MX plus B. And now that I see this, I can be like, okay, so this is gonna be my O, and this is gonna be my M, right? Opening act and my main act. So we can graph these things now. So back to your calculator. So looking at this one, let's clear it again now. Oh, and then the other one here too, um, if you go to graph this next one, do you see how like our window settings are all going to be funny? A good thing to get in the habit of is, is when you start over, go zoom and then go zoom standard, right? Just go back to where we were. So if you press six, then that's going to make the window back to this just 10, like tens all the way around, right? That's a good place to start. Oh, and then we still have the old lines in there, but I'll go back to Y and delete these ones out. So clear these ones out. And then we're going to type it in. So the first one was y is equal to negative x, right? Instead of negative, negative o. So negative x uh, plus 132. Okay, while I have it like this, what do you think? We're probably gonna have to change our, our y scale, aren't we, to, to see all the way up to 132, right? I'll leave it for now though, and then we'll I'll put the other one in. And then the other one was y is equal to 2x minus 3. Okay, so good to go. I'm guessing I'm not going to be able to see this one properly, but that's okay. I'll see the one graph. Little thing spinning up there telling me that it's still thinking. All right, so like I said, well, I'm, see I'm seeing the red graph right now, right? I can't see the top one, so I need to see up to 132. So I'm gonna go into window, and I'm gonna change my Y max. So let's go down to Y max, and I gotta see at least to 132. So why don't we make it like 150, or 160, or 200, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we got that one. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I'm not even close here, am I? So with my X's now, I can get a bit more of an idea, right? So, all right, let's change our X's now. So window. And then our X max is set to 10 right now. I'm thinking that thing's got to be more like... Well, if you think about it, whatever whatever our... our Because um, our X's are O, right? So X plus M is equal to 132. So where they cross has to be somewhere less than 132, obviously, but it's got to be in that kind of a ballpark, right? So why don't I make it like 100 or even 132? It doesn't really matter, but that, that kind of gets us in the right range, right? So make it 100. I might need to change it, but it's fine for now. So now, yep, we see that line. We see that line. Good. So where they cross is our answer, right? So now I'm going to go into second calculate. And then down to intersect. Oop. Enter. And then it's nicely already kind of in the right spot. So I'm going to push enter. And it says second curve. I say yes. And then it says take a guess. And I say yes. So the answer here is 4587. So here, let's sketch it out here. Just really rough sketch again, too. So 4587. So. going up and then blue going down 
<laughs> this is this is called a sketch because I'm not none of this is going in line with like what the with the boxes right now. Just a rough sketch. You could have also just like you know sketched out like this and made your lines, you know, crossing like that. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so what was the numbers? We had 45 and 87. So the cross at 45, 87. So then now what are we looking at here? Well, remember these are, are like our X's and these are our Y's. So this is really like our O, right? This is our O and this is our M. Okay, so our opening act. Opening act uh, was 45 minutes long. And the main act was 87 minutes long. Okay, and that's it.